Hi, this is Eric White. Today I am introducing the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. There are five interesting platforms for the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. First of all, and probably the most important, is that you can write OpenXML programs that operate right in your web browser. The OpenXML SDK for JavaScript works seamlessly in IE10, IE9, in Chrome, in Firefox, and I'll be adding other browsers as we move along in the future. And the second platform, or a variety of platforms, are servers. You can write your OpenXML program using Node.js and run it on a server. You can run it on Windows Server, Linux, or Unix. It has great performance. If you're running on a Microsoft server, it's easy enough to write an OpenXML program using the OpenXML SDK in the .NET framework. If you're running on a different platform such as Linux or Unix, or if you are not using the .NET framework in your particular application, you can use Node.js and use interop calls to call Node.js from Java or C or C++ or whatever server-side language you happen to be using for your web server. The next platform that is interesting is Windows 8 Store applications that are written in JavaScript and HTML5. We can now put OpenXML functionality directly into those types of applications. With Office 2013, an interesting way to extend Office is using JavaScript. Office apps are really super, and if you need to use OpenXML functionality in your Office app, the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript is a great way to add that functionality. And finally, last but certainly not least, is SharePoint 2013 and also even earlier versions of SharePoint. One of the most interesting ways to extend SharePoint is to write JavaScript code. You can put this JavaScript code in web parts. And this is a really interesting and easy way to add OpenXML functionality to SharePoint. On all of these platforms, the three primary scenarios still apply. First of all, document generation. Pretty soon I'm going to post an OpenXML SDK for JavaScript application up on OpenXML Developer that will enable you to give this little application an XML data file and also a template document and this little JavaScript application will turn around and hand you any number of generated OpenXML documents. And this all happens directly in your browser. It doesn't have to be uploaded and processed on some server somewhere. The next scenario is data and content extraction. This is a super interesting scenario. In the near future, I'll make a little JavaScript application that enables you to give it a word processing ML file and it will turn around and hand you all the text of that file. There are a lot of different interesting scenarios that we can put together with this. And finally, document transformation. Transforming word processing ML documents to HTML right there in JavaScript in the browser enables us to display OpenXML content in a super easy way. You can look for examples that demonstrate this in the relatively near future. You can download the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript from CodePlex. The URL is openxmlsdkjs.codeplex.com. To download, click on the Downloads tab. And as of the recording of this screencast, there is only one download available. It's version 1.0 right here. After you download and extract, you'll see this set of files. These are plain old HTML and JavaScript applications, so you can simply click on one of these and open it in a browser. So, for instance, we can open this with Internet Explorer, and we can see the little application here. However, there's an interesting issue, which is that in order to upload and download files 
from your local hard drive directly into JavaScript variables, JavaScript storage locally. At the moment, the best approach to do this is to use little, small Flash controls. These are little buttons that are implemented in Flash. From Flash 10 and onwards, there is the capability in Flash to upload and download files directly into Flash variables, and therefore it is pretty easy to write a little bit of JavaScript code that can put up the little bit of Flash code and enable you to upload and download OpenXML documents. There are current plans in place to implement a file API directly in the browser. There's this file API that is a W3C editor's draft. This file API has a file reader interface that enables you to read local files into JavaScript variables. And there's also a file API for a writer that enables you to directly write to the local hard drive. However, these are currently works in progress. Some browsers implement certain aspects of these APIs, but coverage is a bit spotty right now. In the meantime, we have this workaround using Flash, and when these file APIs become mature, we can switch over to start using them. It does present us with one small logistical problem, which is that the security model of Flash doesn't allow the particular APIs to run if you're not running from a web server. So in other words, those particular APIs that enable reading from and writing to local drives, Flash looks and sees if you're running from a web server and allows those APIs to work. A super easy way to run this from a web server is to run these pages from Visual Studio. In the zip file that you downloaded, there is a Visual Studio solution right here, openxmlsdkjs.sln. You can use Visual Studio Professional. You can also even use the free edition, Visual Studio Express. When you open an HTML page in Visual Studio, it starts up a little development web server and then serves up the page from that web server and therefore the flash will work properly. Let me show you how that works. I'll open up the project. I'm going to walk through the operation of example one. This example demonstrates the plumbing necessary to load, modify, and save an OpenXML document. Let's take a quick look at this code. In order to use the JS upload and JS download modules, you have to have a pair of paragraphs with specific IDs. You'll pass these IDs into the JS upload and JS download modules. The flash controls will be inserted into the page at the location of these paragraphs. Here are all the JavaScript modules that this is dependent on. You'll notice up here that the onClick event calls modified document for this button. Down here we can see that modified document method. It's pretty simple. It opens up the package that was loaded by the Flash module. It adds a new first paragraph to it, and the text of the first paragraph is new first paragraph. And then it serializes it back out to this variable opened file data in preparation for saving it to the local hard drive. And down here, there's the little bit of setup for those flash buttons. The JS upload.create is right here. When the user clicks on that upload button or the open button, and then they browse for a file, and then they click OK, this onComplete method will be called with the file name and the data of that file. This is the data that the modify routine works on. In the jsdownload.create function, 
you pass an object that contains a function here that returns the data for the file to be saved to the local drive. And here you write a method that returns the default file name for the save as dialog box. So let's run it. We see the open, modify, and save. Let's open a document. I'll open this test.docx. I'll now modify the document. And now I'll click the save button and I'll save it as test2.docx. Here's the test2. And if I open it, I see that it has a new first paragraph. So that's the easy way to get going with this, with these flash modules, is just run it from Visual Studio, any version, and you can incorporate those flash buttons into your application. I'm going to record another screencast that shows how to customize those flash buttons. On OpenXMLDeveloper.org, I've put together a set of resources that help you get going with the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. You can find this page at this location. At this location, there are a number of topics here that help you get going. And there is a full reference of every single method in the SDK. You can see it's not a very big API. There are 31 methods in the API. One interesting aspect is every one of these methods in the API, they're documented with the syntax and the arguments and the return value and the usage of that particular API. And further, you can see a complete example right here for that particular API. And you can even run the example here. Once you run the example for certain of the examples, you can download a document that has been generated by that particular example. So I can click this Save button. So I encourage you to go through this API and explore all of these methods. The OpenXML SDK for JavaScript uses another little library that I wrote fairly recently, and that's the link to XML for JavaScript library. There is a page here in the resources area on openxmldeveloper.org that gives you some places to go to get started with linked XML for JavaScript. If you know linked XML for .NET, you'll find linked XML for JavaScript to be very familiar. I have plans to write more documentation and more examples for linked XML for JavaScript. I'll be writing these examples so that they are OpenXML centric to enable you to get going as easily as possible. As we move forward, I'll be porting over some of the tools and code that we have for Power Tools for OpenXML. I've already converted a fair number of those tools from C Sharp to JavaScript, and the conversion happens pretty easily. The same idioms and the same patterns apply for both environments that with linked XML for JavaScript, you can use functional construction, you can use functional transforms, and you can use recursive pure functional transforms. So let me show you what an example might look like. Here's a document generation demonstration. So here we can type in information. This would be a little JavaScript application that generates a management status report. I can type in anything I want here. I might have some supporting data to put into this management status report. Of course, for this little example, I've just dummied up some data and put a little HTML table to contain that data. But I can pick a different set of data. In a real world application, you would probably be querying a database and have your various appropriate buttons and input fields to enable the user to select exactly the data that they want to include in their report. And here we can enter in a summary. I'll click Save and save this document, and we'll go take a look at it. Here's the document. 
Now let's take a look at node.js. There's an example here, exam05, that simulates bulk document generation using node. I'm going to generate 2,000 documents here. I'm going to fast forward here so that you don't have to watch these numbers count up to 2,000. And there it's finished. It created 2,000 documents in about 32 seconds. That's pretty fast. Let's walk through these examples really quickly. First of all, this exam 01, load mod save. This is the canonical example to load a document, make a modification to it, and save it back to the local hard drive. Exam 02 in the zip file that you download. This is the same example that I demonstrated with the jQuery UI interface that had the sliding accordion. Example 03 removes comments from a document, and this demonstrates removing a part and removing a relationship from a document. And example 04 adds a comment to a document, and this demonstrates adding a part and adding a relationship to a document. From one point of view, there are four different configurations for using the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. You can use it with asynchronous module definition. In other words, with AMD, this is the technology that is implemented by RequireJS. You can also be using jQuery or not using jQuery. So I have four examples here that demonstrate just the bare plumbing to get going with each one of those technologies. First of all, this first example shows you not using AMD and not using jQuery. The second example shows you not using AMD and using jQuery. The third example does show using AMD, in other words, require JS, and it doesn't use jQuery. And the fourth example does use AMD and it does use jQuery. AMD is also applicable with Node. So further down here, you'll see there are two examples that show the basic plumbing to get going with Node. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. There will be a lot more to come in the near future. I've got a lot of interesting examples and demonstrations to build using this OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. Thanks for watching. See you next time.